So I decided I didn't want any Ohio State students to go out and give terrible talks, so I came up with this presentation. That's what motivated all this. Here's the organization of this talk. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to plan your presentation. I'm going to talk about how to prepare for your presentation. Then I'm going to talk to you about how to present it. It's not my objective to teach stage presence because I don't know how to teach it and I don't even know how to have it, but um, it's not really about stage presence, about the things that you can do ahead of time to make a good effective talk. And I'm going to spend some extra time talking about visual aids because that's one of the things you have the most control over when you're giving a presentation. There's some great seats up here. I'm harmless. And of course, as required by Ohio law, I'll finish with conclusions. Okay, now the first point I want to make is that a talk is not like a paper. Right? You can't cover all the same stuff. You can't go into the same level of detail. It means you have to make hard decisions about the content. It'll break your heart. I know it will because they always give you a time limit. And you have this long a dissertation or a report and you only have 10 minutes or whatever. It makes you crazy. So you have to get tough and, and cut stuff out. But the time required to prepare a presentation is about the same as the time required to prepare the equivalent document. In a document, you write it, and then you edit it, and then you polish it, and then you make really nice figures. And in a presentation, you organize it, and you make really nice figures, different figures, and I'll get to that. And then you practice. So uh, it takes the same amount of time to prepare either one. Hearing information is different than seeing information. When you read things, you can skip around, you can uh, read the hard parts several times if you want, you can throw away the article. When you're listening, you have to hear things in the order that I say them. So it's up to me to make my organization clear, and it's up to me to make sure that my points are clear, and you only hear things as often as I say them. Ow, my foot. Okay? Good. You're only going to hear things as often as I say them. So if there's something I really want you to remember, it'd be in my best interest to repeat it several times. So I've got to repeat my key points. In a paper, you know where to find the key points because you know they're in the abstract and then the conclusions. And some people don't even read the stuff in between. Some people only look at the pictures. You can't control that. In a talk, people are going to listen to what I say. So hearing versus reading is different because, and this is especially important in technical talks, if you lose somebody, because usually we have a technical thread of stuff that leads to some conclusion, if you lose people because you showed them a frightening equation in the middle, you know, they're not going to come back. They're not going to come back until the very end of the report when they know uh, your presentation, when they know they have to write their trip report, and they know that your, con your key points are going to be in your conclusion. When you're reading, of course, you can just read it in whatever order you want to, and you can throw it away, whatever you want. So the speaker controls the flow of information, which is different than when you write for a reader. The reader controls the order and the flow of information. So it's important to organize and plan carefully. Now, when you go into setting up a presentation, you don't think, you know, they say, oh, uh, what are you going to talk about? You already know what you're going to talk about. That's why you're giving a presentation. The real question is, why? What is your goal? So maybe your goal is to inform or instruct, like I'm giving a lecture in some boring class. Maybe you want to persuade that dissertation committee that you should get your PhD and get the heck out of here. Maybe you want to arouse interest because you would like someone to hire you and you want to seem like you're interesting. Maybe you want to inspire the government to give you a big grant. Right? What is your goal? Evaluating, interpreting, and clarifying. You might have to do some of that. Gathering ideas and lead discussion. I, I don't like doing that. Entertaining, not in engineering, I don't think. Okay, so. Uh, who is your audience? That's your next question. Are they smarter than you? Are they lay people? Is it your dissertation committee? That's this guy here. Are they more, no more than you? Why are they there? And what do they want to get out of this? So you need to think about all this stuff in advance. Okay? Then, if you have any control over it, you try to find out when and where, and it, you won't have any control. They'll tell you when. You won't have any choice. The worst time of day, the best time of day is right in the beginning of the morning when everybody's fresh and bright-eyed and they're having a great time and they haven't started you know, looking at their cell phone because they just finished doing that before they came in. The worst time would be right after lunch. Oops. <laughs> then what about the room? Is it a dark room? Are you going to need to have a dark background or a light background? Um, is the room hard to find? Maybe you want to put up signs in the building and tell people how to find 031 Hitchcock. Or maybe you would like not to put up signs because you don't want them to come because you're afraid. Could happen. Then you've got to ask yourself what kind of audio 
visual equipment is there, you, well, nowadays it's always a projector. In the old days, it's, oh, is there an overhead projector? Or is there a chalkboard? Well, we have chalkboards. We don't have overheads anymore. They're gone the way of the dinosaur. Are you going to need a microphone? Are you going to need a pointer? Or is there going to be one there? Is there going to be a stage? Are you afraid of heights? Are you going to fall over? Or something like that. All those things you want to find out ahead of time. Okay? So get there early. Check it out in advance. Find out, learn how to use the microphone. I'm skipping this first one. Ha! <laughs> this is old slides. You know overhead projectors, remember those? And you turn it on and the bulb would go out and there'd be another bulb. Well, now if the bulb goes out in here, basically we're all hosed, we go home. I can't do anything, so you don't have to pay attention. Then you gotta learn how to use the microphone. When you get to the conference, you go to a conference, the, the speaker introduces you, the, the chairperson introduces you, and first thing you do is they hand you the microphone, and you're supposed to clip the microphone to your necktie or your lapel. Uh, so I have to remember to wear something with a lapel. And then you're expected to put the power supply thing in your pocket or clip it to your waistband. So if I'm wearing a sheer dress that doesn't have any pockets or lapels, then I'm hosed. So I have to think about all that stuff in advance even before I get dressed in the morning. How terrible is that? If you're using a computer, make sure it works. Make sure you can log into it. Make sure you know which buttons to push. I used to say, have a backup. Well, the backup used to be, ah, I'm so old, I'm so cute. Oh, the backup used to be in two sets of overheads. One you carried in the plane with you and the other one was in your luggage in case something happened to your luggage, you had one with you. You can't do that anymore. So now it's like you have a CD and a flash stick. Or you have a CD or a flash stick and then you're able to download your slides off your web if you have to because there's not too much you can do. Um, then you figure out where you're going to stand. Um, what kind of pointer are you going to use, this kind or this kind? I got two of these free with my TV set. Okay, we're not too old yet. Um, if you have stuff, where are you going to set your stuff? If you have props that you're going to hold up, where are you going to put them? Where are you going to stand so you can come over here and push this button for the next slide? Okay, so now you're ready. You're going to gather all the stuff. You've been working on this project, dissertation, whatever it is you've been doing. You've got all this great data and, and motivation and schematics and, and stuff. And oh, you want to tell the world. But you have this box that's only 10 minutes or whatever they've given you. It's not enough. So uh, you have to make some hard decisions. It breaks your heart. So then you start saying, well, let's see, how should I organize this material? 97.6% of all students organize a presentation in the order that they learned the material. That's probably not a bad order, but it's not always the best order. So you want to make a conscious decision about it. Or maybe it's the order of what's the most expensive thing to down to the cheapest or the other way. Or if you have difficult concepts, you want to build them up gradually. Or maybe you want to build them up, build up complexity gradually, try to relate things to what they already know. But you want to make it think about it. And maybe you're going to use some kind of combination organization there. Okay, now you write an outline. 94.3% of all students think that they don't need to write an outline. Um, and usually they're wrong. It really helps you to organize your thoughts and get rid of extraneous material. So after you write your outline, first thing you're going to ask yourself is, is everything in it necessary? Do I need all this stuff in here? Because I'm not going to be able to fit it in. Then when you're looking at your outline, you can say, is the audience going to understand when I talk about the Fourier transform, blah, blah, blah? Or do I need to introduce that idea? Because not everyone is from my field, let's say. So do I need to put some slides in for that? And then. Is there anything I put in here that's going to make somebody think of an idea or a question that I don't want to answer, like at my defense? <laughs> well, then, well, at your defense, you have to put those slides in. But other times, maybe you can leave them out if you can have a chance. And then make sure you've made and repeated your key points. And then you ask yourself, will it fit into the time allowed? And the answer is always no. And uh, every talk should have the following things. This is required by the state of Ohio. A title slide, an organization slide, all your good stuff in the middle, and a conclusion slide. Okay, so let's talk about these. The title slide should contain your title, DOI, and the list of the authors, all the authors that helped you with this presentation. The organization that you come from, why? Well, I read a book once that said, it's the animal in us, wants to know where you're from. Fortunately, if you're coming from the Ohio State University, you've already got credibility, right? So that's why you put that on there. If you have sponsors that want to be thanked, Thank them. This is the place, right there on your title slide. When you present your title slide, now maybe you're at a conference and someone said, oh, here is so-and-so and, -so and they are going to talk about blah, 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 and they read your title for you. Oh, well, uh, you still want to say your title. You can just paraphrase it. 
Uh, or you can read it if you're in panic mode, but if you're not in panic mode, you paraphrase it. But what the idea there is, it just gets you started talking. It's something you know what it is, and then you pronounce everybody's name. We have a diverse community here. There's going to be some funny looking names on your slide. We want to hear what those things sound like, okay? And then say which one of those funny sounding things is you. And if you have a sponsor, you mention them out loud at this point. Okay, here's a slide I showed you when I started, Secret to Terrific Technical Talk, and my name is Betty Lisa Anderson, so you know how to pronounce it. I'm from the Ohio State University, go Bucks. And now you make an organization slide. People often say, well, I don't have time to fit everything into my 10 minutes. Can't I skip the organization slide? The answer is no, apart from being required by Ohio State law. Uh, the reason that you have an organization slide is it helps your audience figure out your scope. And if they have an idea of your organization ahead of time, it helps them follow your train of thought. So for example, let's say I'm a theoretician. I'm going to present a whole bunch of equations. I'm going to derive stuff. All the experimentalists are going to whip out their cell phones and start playing Angry Birds. But maybe I'm an experimentalist, or yeah, and I'm an experimentalist, I'm going to show you all kinds of, uh, of experimental results, and I've got a box here, and I'm going to hook it up to an oscilloscope, and all the theoreticians are going to get out and start playing boggle on their cell phones, right? Maybe I'm going to make stuff up, whatever it is. You want the audience to know what kind of a talk it is, right? And it gives you a chance to say your key point for the first time. Here's a totally lame example, but you get the idea. Here's the organization of my talk. Yes, sir, e, Bob. I'm going to talk about why I use lasers and fiber optics. Then I'm going to discuss LEDs, lasers, and light bulbs. And then I'm going to show you some theory predicting that lasers are brighter. So all the theoreticians go, oh, theory, excellent. And all the experimentalists go, ah. But I weaseled in my key point here that lasers are brighter. I know it's a stupid example. I'm just trying to give you an idea. And then I say, oh, but I'm also going to show you some experimental data so now people don't get up and leave. And then conclusions. And they know I'm going to show conclusions, but I still have to say it. Okay, now, when you're doing your presentation, you're doing your organization, always, always, always start with the big picture. Half the people in a room only have a vague idea of what you're going to talk about. You've been communing with this data your whole graduate career, senior capstone design project, whatever it is, you know this stuff, but not everyone does. So tell them, in the grand scheme of things, how do you fit in? So for example, blah, 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 I'm going to talk about uh, computers and the data transmission between computers involves fiber optics and I did blah, blah, blah. Only took me a couple of seconds, but that tells you where in the universe my work belongs. Okay? Then you ask yourself, are they lost yet? Okay? Uh, remember, if you jump right into your results without the big picture, most people are going to start you know, fiddling with their phones. And once you lost them, especially in technical talks, you're not going to get them back until your final slide unless they've already left the room. In a big room like this, people can leave. Now, be sure to repeat your key points. You know what they say. Tell them what you're going to tell them. That would be in your title and the organization. Then tell them. And then tell them what, you're what, tell them what you told them. That's your conclusion slide. State your key points as often as you can weasel it in. And use short internal summaries. This is a great way to make a transition and repeat your key points. I've just shown that. Uh, equations predict that a laser is brighter than a light bulb. Now I'll present experimental data. Or I'll get a chance to say that again. Yes. <laughs> That's what the only thing to remember. And we'll talk about your visuals later. Okay? But you got to practice your talk. People say, oh, I don't need to practice my talk. Or I get students who do the following. OK, I'm going to practice my talk. I got my laptop here. Here's my laptop. Right? You know what you're going to say. It's not the same as actually getting up and saying it. It takes time. You might find out that something that looks good on paper is really hard to say because it's alliterative or something like that. So you want to actually practice out loud. Stand up. I know you feel goofy. Here's what I do. I go into the classrooms at 6.30 in the morning. I guarantee nobody's in there. Nobody's listening. And the janitor doesn't care. And then I actually get out the overhead or whatever, and I practice my talk, and I walk around. And then you time it. And then you start figuring out what you're going to cut out because it's always too long. Okay? Then practice it again. Once is not enough. Practice it again. Wait a day or two. Let things settle out. Let you sort of forget some of the places where you trip up. And then practice it again. See if you can get an audience. Right? Um, and then time it every time so that you know that you will consistently fit within the time allowed. The worst mistakes that we see when we go to conferences and dissertation defenses and final project presentations no big picture. Lousy slides. I'm going to talk about that. Too long. Too long means didn't practice. Oh, we hate that. Okay? We don't like that. 
couldn't follow. That means you didn't organize. If I can't follow your presentation, well, it could mean two things. It could mean I really don't understand your stuff because it's just I'm just don't, not in your field, or it could be that you didn't present it well enough. It is possible your audience isn't going to understand everything you say, but it could be you could look at your organization. And people don't reiterate their key points, so you go away and go, well, I heard a lot of stuff, but I can't actually remember any particular thing. 